Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News, and we're very pleased to have Doug Hamp back with us today. Hi, Doug. Hello. Well, I'm going to uh, introduce the topic now and, and let Doug hold forth on this one. And I think he merits some praise for taking on this particular subject. Why God Did Not Elect Calvinists, the subtitle, The Biblical Concept of Election, Never Means Predestined to Salvation. Let's talk about election, and specifically in the context of Matthew 24. Who are the elect? Yeah, you know, Jesus said that if the days are not shortened, no flesh will be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. He also talks about the elect being deceived, and he talks about his angels going out and gathering the elect. Well, this, of course, begs the question, who are these elect? Now, you know, the title is just to kind of uh, get some interest there. I'm not trying yes. to pick on the Calvinist per se, but really it's about what does elect or election mean. When we go back to the Hebrew Scriptures, what we find is that the word bachar just means to choose. It's in, in the New Testament, it would be the word eklegome. So it's the same mm -hmm. word that's being used. And if you want to look at that in the, the Greek Septuagint, you'll find that it's the same word that's being used. So that the word that we have for elect really just means to choose something. Mm -hmm. And we see that, that the word is used of how God chose Saul, then he didn't choose Saul. We see he chose mm -hmm. David. He didn't choose David's brothers. He chose Jerusalem. And then we find eight places, at least, maybe I missed a few, but at least eight places in the Hebrew Scriptures where God calls Israel, Jacob, his elect. Mm -hmm. So we see that his elect, the elect, when we're talking about the elect, plural, it's talking about the Jews. And therefore, we come to the New Testament, and a lot of passages begin to make sense to us, where Paul says, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. We see in First Peter, Peter says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims in the dispersion, which is the Jews, mm -hmm. and he calls them elect according to the foreknowledge of mm. God the Father. So they're not elected to salvation. They have been elected. Their election is because God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be the recipients of the, the oracles of God, to be the line through which the Messiah would come, and the ones who would come to the Messianic age uh, if they would accept the invitation. Now, that invitation, thankfully, has been extended to all of us, uh, we got sort of a, a Facebook blast kind of invitation where they mm -hmm. got a special Golden Boss type invitation. But it doesn't matter. If you got the invitation, then come, however you received it. Mm -hmm. So then we come to Matthew 24, and where Jesus says that false Christs and false prophets will arise in those days to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Now that has often been interpreted to suggest that it's going to be the deception of the church at large, the de Gentile church. But really, it's not talking about that at all. It's talking about the Jews. If we go back to the book of Daniel, we see that there is going to be a seven-year treaty that will be signed, will be brokered by the Antichrist mm -hmm. in Daniel 9, verse 26 and 27, where he's going to uh, confirm a covenant with many. And in the, in the middle of the week, He's going to break that covenant. We, of course, see that he's going to go into the temple and declare himself to be God, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We also see in the book of Isaiah chapter 28 that it talks about how they're going to, they're going to have a, a covenant with death to, in order to uh, avoid the, the overflowing scourge, and God is going to annul that covenant that they signed. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be deceived, unfortunately. We know from the book of Zechariah that, l that regrettably, two-thirds of the Jewish people will be wiped out during the time of Jacob's trouble. And again, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. You see, Jesus was talking about what was going to happen to the Jewish people specifically there in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, uh, reading here in, uh, in verse 24, For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And this is one of, the, one of several places that word occurs in the Olivet Discourse. The elect 
the possibility that they would be deceived. You know, as you explain the word elect or election as being more or less interchangeable with chosen, it strikes me that the Jews are called God's chosen people. That's one of their titles. Right. And I think it's because we have these two words in English that has actually obfuscated the, the actual meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. But the word elect, election, chosen, doesn't mean chosen to salvation. It just means chosen for a particular purpose. Uh -huh. And we see that God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Uh, a lot of things. I mean, J Jesus was called the elect one. Uh, he certainly wasn't chosen for salvation. He's the one that gives us salvation. That's what his name actually means, Yeshua. He gives us salvation. Absolutely. So, yeah, so in no way can we suggest that the word means someone who's chosen for salvation. It doesn't make any sense. Then we go to the, 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 the word or the passage there where it talks about if those days were not shortened, uh, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days mm -hmm. will be shortened. We see that in uh, Daniel, it talks about how the saints are going to be given into the hands of the Antichrist for a time, times, and half a time. Mm -hmm. We then go to Revelation chapter 12. It talks about the, um, the, the, the Jews who are of the woman, or, or the woman basically there, and that they're going to be protected in a place for 1,260 days. And then we see, lastly, in Matthew 24, verse 31, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, we see all these things happening, and then he's going to send out his angels to the four winds of heaven to gather his elect mm -hmm. from the four winds of heaven. And then you go to Isaiah, and it says that he's going to gather Israel from the four winds of, of heaven and bring them back into the land of Israel. It strikes me as you're explaining this that your concept of the elect is very pro-Israel. Yes. It is very much so. And sadly, uh, for a long period in church history, uh, a replacement theology arose and that may be where some of the confusion about election ha has occurred. Absolutely. I think once you, re once you replace Israel with the church, uh, <laughs> your whole hermeneutic, your, your method of interpre interpreting scripture just gets completely warped. And so I think the Lord is actually trying to kind of get us back on target yeah. so that Israel's Israel and those of us who are Gentiles were grafted in to that number. Just because someone is Jewish doesn't mean they're going to be saved. They still have to receive the invitation and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put on the garment of salvation, as it were. Well, what you've heard so far is just a tiny sample of what you'll hear on this DVD. Uh, it's a, a complete lecture on the subject, why God did not elect Calvinists, the biblical concept of election defined by Doug Hamp. I think you'll find it very interesting. Yours for 19.95 plus shipping and handling if you call the 800 number on your screen. And as we have been doing for the last few days, we're offering this Bible software, which is a wonderful Bible software. I'm going to start using it myself, even though I've been using a very expensive variety of Bible software. This one is absolutely free to you as a bonus when you order the DVD that we're talking about today. Tell us a little bit about the Word for your personal computer. It's a great software. I use it every day when I uh, study the Word. That's what I use, and it has everything that I want, but it's all centered around the Bible. So as I'm reading the text, I can put my mouse over a word, and it will bring up Bible dictionaries. I can look at uh, the Hebrew or the Greek, and, and you know you can look at the, the lexicon mm -hmm. to see what the definition is of those particular words. You can quickly do cross-references, uh, commentaries, encyclopedias, and maps, and much more is on that CD. And you don't have to lug a Strong's Concordance <laughs> around with <laughs> Those you. days are over. It's really <laughs> nice. I mean, there's over 500 <laughs> books on that, on that CD. Wow. A and uh, the, the value of the publications contained in this would be worth thousands of dollars. It's a great Bible software. Yours absolutely free as a bonus when you order Why God Did Not Elect Calvinists. Yours for nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Call that 800 number on your screen right now, and uh, they'll know what you're asking for when you give the full title of the DVD. Doug, it's always great to have you here. Uh, we could probably talk for hours, but we're out of time. <laughs> Next time. Come again soon. Thank you. Doug Hamp, author, lecturer, uh, always bringing new ideas to the, uh, to the scene of biblical study, and particularly as it concerns Bible 
prophecy. Thanks for being with us today. And as always, I would remind you that, that the Lord could return at any moment. So keep looking up.